Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs, expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 
11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts and watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh and feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. 
Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the back.
Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see you all. We are joined by Chief Bryan, our Chief Operating Officer, John King, our Chief of Staff, Carmen Chubb, and members of our Advisory Council. I don't know whose phone that is. Oh, that's our phone. All right. <laughs> Can we put it on silence? Oh, okay. We're getting back into the swing of things. You know, we've been out of practice for a while. Um, joining us from our advisory council, who's put in so much work over the past couple of months, we have Brenda Muhammad. Uh, Dorothy Hurst, Dave Wilkinson, Andrea Boone, our council member, Michael Lankford, Courtney Smith. Um, did I miss anyone from the advisory council? All right, and also we have our deputy COO, LaShondra Burks, with us today. Uh, this has been some really important work, and as you all know, we have experienced an uptick in crime, not just in our city, uh, but across the country over the past year, and this really has called for all hands on deck. And um, we had a press confer conference a couple of months ago where I said that, you know, we essentially been doing everything and throwing the, everything including the kitchen sink at crime. And I was calling uh, the, for the convening of an advisory council to really take a fresh look at what we are doing uh, to help us determine what more we should and could do. And so I'll call the members of the advisory council. Uh, they included, I mentioned, council member Andrea Boone, Dorothy Hurst, who's a member of the Atlanta Citizens Review Board representing MPUs M through R, Michael Lankford, regional vice president, the Atlanta Community Involvement Center and West Care Foundation, council member J.P. Mazakite from District 8, Brenda Muhammad, the Executive Director of the Atlanta Victims Assistance Incorporated, Deborah Scott, CEO of Georgia Stand Up, Randall Slaughter, our retired Atlanta Fire Rescue Chief, Courtney Smith, President uh, and LPC Midtown Neighbors Association, Carol Tomei, CEO of UPS, George Turner, who's retired APD Chief and with the Atlanta Hawks. Renata Turner, the presiding judge of Fulton County Juvenile Court, Dave Wilkinson, president and CEO of the Atlanta Police Foundation, Matthew Wesley Williams, president of ITC, and also a FAMU Rattler, might I add, and Sally Yates, partner at King & Spalding, 
um, uh, uh, partner at King and Spalding, special matters and in government investigations, and also, um, as you all know, a former um, um, attorney general, I'm having a brain freeze, uh, for the Northern District of Georgia, and also, I believe, acting attorney general um, for a time. Also, um, I don't know if Dr. Halpert is here with us. There he is. Um, Dr. John Halpert is joining us, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Grady Hospital. You have heard many of us say that violence is a public epidemic, and it certainly is fitting that we have um, one of our strongest health partners join us in this work. And I believe Carmen, um, do we have the list of the presenters to the committee? Do we get that? Okay, so John would be able to share more on that. Okay, I was asking because um, we've had so many incredible presenters to this advisory council, so I want to make sure that they are acknowledged as well, but our COO will share that information. Um, I want to also thank the Biden administration. Um, the Biden administration has been a solid partner with us in this work. Uh, when I visited the White House in March with several governors and mayors from across the country, as we talked about COVID-19, it was at that time uh, one of the many times that I've had the opportunity to elevate this concern to our president and to his administration, what we were seeing in the aftermath of COVID and the unrest that we had last summer. Unfortunately, we had a preview before many other cities uh, because our state was open and there were many people uh, coming into our cities, coming into our city. Um, so we were starting to see an uptick in crime before many other major cities. Um, and unfortunately, what we saw was just not something happening in Atlanta. Uh, we've seen it spread throughout the country as other cities have reopened. And with the leadership of the Biden administration, uh, you all are aware of the announcement that was made uh, last month that Atlanta would join 14 other jurisdictions for a community violence intervention collaborative. Uh, we had already identified $5 million in our American Rescue Funds towards violence intervention work. On yesterday, uh, led by Ambassador Susan Rice and other members of the Biden administration, we had an opportunity to share not just with other mayors, but also with community leaders and partners who've been doing the real work in our communities in this area for a very long time. There was a pilot program on an MPUV, which includes Adair Park, Mechanicsville, Peoplestown, Pittsburgh, Summerhill, uh, and the Summerhill area and it showed some really promising results. This program, this pallet program, Balance Intervention Program, Cure Balance, was implemented in 2020. It's still underway, but to date, police have seen about a 50% decrease in violent crime in the area, and so we know that it works. The data shows that it works. So we will be using our American Rescue Funds to begin with expanding that program in the city, uh, but also our advisory council has made some additional recommendations on how we can leverage those funds. So I will share more of this information with you. The advisory council evaluated seven key initiatives led or coordinated by the mayor's office that are already underway and 34 actions led or coordinated by the Atlanta Police Department. Overall, uh, the advisory council believes that the city uh, has a very broad crime strategy plan, but our efforts would be better focused if we really honed in on this strategy to specific locations and specific individuals who are most afflicted by crime. This framework will help determine where imminent violence crime reduction initiatives should be implemented and where they can have the most impact in reducing violent crime. And just a couple of things that I would share that struck me uh, from this report that you all will also get a copy of. Um, the, 
advisory council looked at data, roughly 70% of violent crimes defined as homicide, rape, aggravated assault and robbery are committed by people between the ages of 25 and older. Youth under 16 years of age committed 10% of the violent crimes. And also the victims were similarly concentrated uh, with victims on average being between 20 and 29. We were able to determine in 46% of the homicides committed in the city the relationship between the victim and the perpetrator. Of the 46% where we were able to determine that relationship, the perpetrator knew the victim in 70% of the homicides. So this speaks to what Chief Bryant has said repeatedly about the need for conflict resolution in our communities. 90% of our homicides were caused by guns. Uh, APD has worked to address guns, seizing 939 weapons to date, year to date. Um, and also, repeat offenders committed 18% of all felony cases adjudic adjudicated in Fulton County. Those are very sobering statistics. So based on the review of this data and the presentations that were made to the advisory committee, the uh, uh, advisory council made the following recommendations. To create a dedicated mayor's office of violence reduction to lead the overall focus violent crime reduction strategy and support continued coordination and oversight of violent crime in the city. This office should support both enforcement and non-enforcement programs to continue and or begin critical initiatives with a clear focus on specific individuals most afflicted by violent crime. Um, this will include public awareness campaigns to work with the community stakeholders to build capacity and infrastructure and locations in neighborhoods experiencing violence expand community violence intervention programs within targeted locations partnering with institutions like Grady uh, to help conflict mediation and resolution to reduce retaliatory violence. APD should continue working with communities to conduct security assessments and develop plans in targeted areas. Um, expand APD's repeat offender unit to track violent repeat offenders to ensure cases are properly adjudicated. Continue to increase the resources of the APD license and permit team to enhance nuisance property enforcement. These are uh, the clubs that are operating after hours. Continue to focus on hiring 250 additional police officers in FY22, which we've committed to also uh, continuing our commitment to expand the Operation Camera Network and increase the use of license plate readers, to continue implementation of our Light Up the Night initiative to add 10,000 new streetlights by December 31st, 2022 in target areas. The council also recommends an investment of $70 million to fund these actions and initiatives. 50 million coming from public funding and the remaining 20 million coming from philanthropic and nonprofit partners, further underscoring what we've said all along that it really will take a village uh, to make a dent and to make a difference. So again, thank you to the members of our advisory council um, as you all know, we set a goal at the beginning of the summer of hiring 1,000 youth through our Hire Atlanta Youth Program. Today, we have exceeded that goal. We have employed 1,400 youth in just the past three months. Um, our Youth Entrepreneurship Program is also off to a great start. We've secured $2 million in funding. We've had 87 youth participate in this program, creating seven major private-public partnerships. Um, this has also impacted our ability to engage with our water boys. Uh, we, I believe that number is at 87 that we have engaged with them. Uh, to offer them services, but I liken it to many uh, in our homeless population. It will take more than one touch point 
it will likely take several touch points um, because as we were discussing back in the back, the reality is, is they are making a lot of money without structure, without the need for discipline. Um, so it is going to be a heavy lift to uh, give them an incentive to come into a program that's a lot less structured and the money may be a little less, but certainly um, the benefits will be long lasting and also uh, a lot more safe. So again, to the public, we know that you are well intentioned when you are stopping on the corners and you are giving them money, um, but if it looks chaotic and it looks as if they are putting themselves in danger, we just ask that you, you not feed into it by giving them money and purchasing water. A uh, part of our public campaign will also be uh, to inform the public as to how they can help redirect many of these young people to some of these services that are available because they just may not know that they exist. Um, and with that, I will call up Chief Rodney Bryan and I will come back uh, to the podium after he's done with an update on our missing and murdered children investigation and also to open. Good morning, and thank you, Mayor, for your leadership and convening this group uh, that I think will give a lot of help and direction as it relates to us continuing to combat crime. As the Mayor stated, the City of Atlanta had the opportunity uh, to see violent crime begin to increase much sooner uh, than many of our other major cities, but it also gave us the ability to put a plan together and a strategy together ahead of other major cities as well. One of the things that I continue, uh, I thought that was important during that time was to ensure we solicit the assistance of our federal partners and our other state partners. And doing that, uh, I think that that has allowed us to really start seeing, a, have an impact on where we are with crime currently. Uh, even though we are still up, as the mayor stated, we are starting to see those numbers come down tremendously. At the beginning of the year, many of you reported that we were 60 percent up in our homicide rate. Today we are less than 25 percent up in our homicide rate, meaning that we are con actually putting a dent in that violent crime and believing that uh, uh, the strategies that we have in place are actually working. And when asked what we contribute this to, one of the things you have to understand is last year this time, uh, our police officers focus was much different. We were out protecting and addressing civil disturbance throughout our city. Uh, we were out defending police properties. The morale of our police officers were tremendously low. We have begun to see that tide turn. Our police officers are very active in the streets and to think and say anything otherwise is, is, is harmful to uh, what our officers continue to do every day. So our focus have changed. We have the ability to be much more proactive in the spaces that we are seeing violence. One of the things that I thought was also important is that we centralize our police department, our investigation section. Uh, so now we have an investigation division that targets both major crime, property crimes, and special enforcement section. This gives us the ability to be more strategic in how we are investigating crime, more efficient and more effective in our investigation as well. Uh, as I measure and have conversations with our leadership team every single week uh, to see how things are progressing, everyone believes that this new strategy is the most effective and we are really seeing the impact as it relates to what we're doing. I'll, I, I, be, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge our federal partnerships and our state partnerships. Uh, last year, as I stated, when we were seeing the violent crimes increase, I reached out to all of our federal partners, all of our state partners, to see who was willing to come in and assist us. And all uh, uh, were willing and uh, were helpful in putting together plans and strategies to do so. Uh, the FBI, the DEA, uh, the ATF, all have been phenomenal. Uh, our state partner, Georgia State Patrol and GBI, have been very helpful as well. 
our local partners, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office and the other municipality police officer departments, we all come together and speak regularly, understanding that the crime problem we're seeing is not an Atlanta problem. This is a regional problem that you can replicate throughout our nation. And so for the mayor to put together this task force, I think will be helpful to support the idea of bringing on 250 police officers in the next year and for us to be able to restructure what we're doing as it relates to background and recruitment, working with the Atlanta Police Foundation to come up with bonuses and strategies to bring in uh, new applicants, uh, I think is, again, forward thinking. As you all know, you could ride through our city and see billboards up for police departments and police agencies all around our city. Uh, and that's because of the climate that we're in. But again, the mayor's office and the support of the city council all are in board. And when I, th I think that when you find all groups working for one cause, uh, it, it allows us to get things done. And so I'm confident that we'll be able to reach that goal of 250. Operation Shield, our camera neck work, I think that for this task force to support that idea will be very helpful. The camera network system that we have in the city of Atlanta is bar none better than any that you'll find in this nation. Uh, it is very helpful. It gives us the ability to be in places that we cannot have police officers. But it also allows us to have phenomenal work as it relates to our investigation. And then our repeat offender coordination, expanding that. I think that's a wonderful idea because what that does is it, it allows us to work with the other agencies, our state partners uh, over at the county, uh, the DA's office, bringing the courts in line for us to all really be targeted and focus on really having an impact on crime where we're seeing the problems that exist. And so, Mayor, again, I thank you for bringing this task force together because it also allows us to bring in other, one of the things that you, when you read through this report, you will not see them say that there needs to be a level of increased police enforcement. And that's because I believe that the police officers are doing all that they can do. What it does says is that we bring in civic, uh, civic organizations and we bring in nonprofit and we bring in other entities to do non-enforcement in areas that we continue to see systemic problems. And so with that being said, thank you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership. Uh, and I'll turn it back over to you. The mayor just asked me to speak a little bit about some of the presenters that presented to the advisory council just to give you a sense of through the four meetings that this advisory council had combined with two work sessions, who all was involved in this work. So in the first four meetings, and you'll see in the full report, the specific topics that were discussed. We had a diverse array of staff members from the city as well as some outside presenters helping to make sure that people understood the variety of initiatives that were going on within the city and help to bring about discussion and brainstorm on new ideas or initiatives to either expand or build upon what was already going on. In addition to that, we had two work sessions where we brought in outside experts or outside perspectives. The first was a youth panel where we brought together youth from different parts of the city to speak to their experiences as it relates to violence. And that was an incredibly impactful panel for the advisory council. Gave a lot of sense as to the challenges that they face and the ideas and things that we need to be doing as we move forward. The second work session was with an expert in anti-violence initiatives. This was an expert, his name's Thomas Apt. He works at the Council on uh, Criminal Justice, and he's also been a uh, senior official in the Department of Justice. He brought a very valuable evidence-informed in per perspective on what other cities and other states and what nationally has been proven to be effective. And so through all of those discussions, through those presentations, uh, this advisory council was able to consider that as they ultimately put together this recommendations report. So 
also worth noting, um, it's the question has been asked, our commitment to our officers. Today, our officers uh, will see in their paychecks uh, the final phase of increasing their pay, which was the commitment that we made to the pay increase, the largest pay increase 30% in the history of APD. Um, you know, we've talked about this. this. This year has been a challenging year across the country. Uh, but as Chief Ryan mentioned, if you've ever questioned the com our commitment from the administration standpoint and the commitment of our officers, uh, you don't have to look any further than looking at the body cam footage of the shooting a couple of weeks ago in Midtown, uh, where this officer elevator door opens, someone opens fire, the officer is on the ground, and he still manages, um, after being shot twice, to be able to unload his weapon. And they never skipped a beat. So our officers are continuing to run into danger uh, to protect us all. And this administration and me personally, I continue to be grateful uh, for the sacrifices that they make each and every day and will continue to do all we can do uh, to support our officers. And there have been questions and, you know, it's interesting just how things get turned around, even discussions on defund the police and where I stood on that. Uh, we didn't pass that in Atlanta. And had it been passed, I would have vetoed it. Uh, but the story that has not publicly been told in the day on that vote, I personally called council members who I thought were on the fence or on the verge of supporting that and asked them not to support it. And I told them why. And thankfully, that did not uh, happen in this city. So, you know, relationships can sometimes hit bumps in the road. We're all human. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we aren't still focused on what's most important, and that's the safety of our public and our communities. Um, and then before we open up for questions, uh, before the pandemic, as you all know, we reopened the investigation into the Atlanta missing and murdered children. Um, this was a very, very painful time in our city's history. I know Michael Lankford, Brenda Muhammad, and s many others um, here today uh, remember that time very well, experienced it. Um, there were murders of innocent children and young people in our city that went unsolved for many years. Uh, part of my asking that this be reopened was in light of where we are with DNA testing some 40 years later. Uh, what, if anything, more could we take a look at uh, to make sure that we have examined everything possible to make sure that the person or people uh, responsible are being held accountable? Uh, a few things have happened since we reopened this. Uh, thus far, investigators have methodically reviewed an estimated 40 percent of the collected evidence to determine which items can be submitted for additional processing to a private lab. On June 21st, uh, we have moved forward with that processing. Uh, we are not sharing the names um, of the victims that we were able to extract DNA for testing because we want to be mindful of the integrity of the investigation. Uh, this private lab has extensive experience in the field of analyzing deteri deteriorated DNA and has a successful history in providing evidence in high profile nationwide murder cases. Fiber evidence was reanalyzed in all 30 of the cases and investigators have also um, extended the timeline from 1970 to 1985 to see if there are any additional children or victims um, that perhaps have been overlooked. Uh, we are, I believe there are two cases, uh, Chief Bryan can correct me if I'm wrong, that we have been able to send off DNA for additional analysis. Uh, so we certainly hope to have that information back over the next few months, hopefully um, 
before I leave office. I, I hope that we're able to get it back. But if not, I trust that whomever the next mayor is will keep this as a priority. Um, and it's truly my hope that with the analysis of this additional DNA that we can have some additional answers. Also, there is the art memorial that is now uh, at Hartsville Jackson with portraits of all of the children. And we are also moving forward uh, with the placing of the eternal uh, flame on the grounds of City Hall. So we will continue to keep you updated. Uh, thank you, Chief Brian, and to all of the officers who have continued this important work. And also, I just want to, again, thank our advisory council for this dedication and very thoughtful work that they've given to us. And also, uh, thank you to John Keene, our chief operating officer, Carmen Chubb, our chief of staff, LaShondra Burks, our DCOO, I see uh, Jerome Jordan, our deputy chief of staff. I don't know if I'm missing anybody else, Curtis. I see Curtis over here in his work clothes uh, from constituent services and just to all of our leaders in the city. Um, you know, it goes without saying this has been a difficult year, but our leaders have not stopped. They have worked day in and day out, more hours than any of us could begin to imagine with a dedication and a focus on keeping the city going. And I think sometimes that gets lost when things don't go wrong uh, we often don't recognize what it takes to make things go right so thank you to all of our leaders um, our senior leaders for the work that you've done and thank you to our employees um, so with that I'll take any questions you may have Yeah, and this is the same man who didn't know that uh, the coronavirus could be spread by asymptomatic people until we were several months into the pandemic. So I don't make any assumptions about what he knows to be true uh, and to be fact, um, but it's election season. And I'm not the one who held a shotgun on the 14-year-old uh, to show people that I was tough on crime. We've been doing the work. And it's unfortunate that we don't have the leadership and the partnership uh, that we need. Uh, it's unfortunate that fingers and are being pointed, and I believe he placed blame on city leadership for the metro area. I'm the mayor of Atlanta. He's the governor of the entire state. So when I Googled this morning, uh, to look at crime stats for the state. When I got to the GBI website, maybe my phone's a little slow, I saw crime stats up to 2018. So I know what the stats are in Atlanta because I get them every single week from our chief. We share it with our cabinet. We have a full discussion in our cabinet every week on what crime is in Atlanta, and we publish it. I don't know what the stats are in the state. So I would begin uh, by asking the question, what are you doing about the job that you have? Because I've been true to the commitments I made when I ran for mayor. But I can't say the same uh, for him. Yes, and I will let John um, give you more details on the Cure Violence Program and MPUV. We have seen uh, it was um, uh, funded by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, private funds, also with the support of Chris 180, and it has given us the results that we really need throughout the city. So I will let John give more details on that. I'll just highlight a couple things. There are some places that we can point you all to to get some great details on this work. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, 
funded by the Annie Casey Foundation in partnership with Chris 180. Um, it's based on a specific evidence-based program called Cure Violence, uh, which is led by an organization called Cure Violence Global. And ultimately, it has, it's based in the community. It's based in finding credible messengers that can work within these communities in order to disrupt violence and make sure that retaliatory violence doesn't happen, make sure that people are there to help and to listen and to provide therapy and other community-based services. Um, and as the mayor mentioned, it's proven to be very effective. Uh, what we've already seen in our pilot program has shown the decreases in violence, decreases in homicides, and the evidence uh, is nationwide. Well, what we'll have to look at it, certainly when you have a budget, it's going to be at the expense of something else. But what I know is that when our communities aren't safe or when they don't feel safe, nothing else really matters. And so people will have to understand that for us to implement these recommendations, we are going to have to cut somewhere else. Where that is, um, we will best determine. But if you recall, and transitioning uh, from our, our uh, jail and our employees, we were able to reallocate many of the funds and personnel from our correction staff into some of this community-based work. And so the great thing um, with our, our CFO and with John, who has a very extensive uh, professional background, we bring a very different approach into how we look at how we spend our funds in the city and how we allocate and reallocate. Um, and, you know, it's my hope that this is not the last tranche of funding that we will see from the federal government. As I was on the call yesterday, many other cities and everybody's budget is different and their needs are different. Um, many cities have committed much more than we had the five million. Um, so we know that there is still room for us to grow in that space and now having these solid recommendations, we have a pretty good idea of what that framework should be. No, we, we didn't say it would necessarily be an increase. One of the recommendations is to stand up a completely separate office, a balanced intervention office. So it may or may not fall within the police budget. We also have the support of the police foundation and other partners. So it really is too soon to speculate. Um, but as we know, the vast majority of our budget right now goes toward public safety between police and, Atlanta, uh, and um, Atlanta Fire Rescue. So it's a big portion of our budget anyway. So it may expand, uh, it may not. I'm not aware of an invitation. Uh, Jerome's shaking his head. Carmen's shaking her head. So I've not received an invitation to speak. Um, you know, but as my mother says, you only have to tell the truth once. And the truth is this. We are committed to public safety in Atlanta. I've not had a discussion with the governor on what our needs are. So it's, it's really interesting that he speaks to our shortcomings uh, and, you know, it's election season. That, that, that is what it is. But I'm not running. My name's not on the ballot this year. So I, I don't have to speak in, in re-election talking points. Um, our commitment remains our commitment. We've not wavered from that. 
we'll see. Mayor, does the city council have to vote on the implementation of any of these recommendations? Uh, that would be a question for our COO. Um, there may be some things. Anytime we set up a new department, that has to go through the legislative process. Um, so I would expect there may be some things, and when we start reallocating budget money and, and um, we had set forth some legislation before council on how we would spend our American Rescue Fund money. So if we make some reallocation of those funds, then certainly that's likely to have to go through council. And how will you measure the success and the impact of these recommendations? We'll continue to see if our crime numbers are dropping. Um, we've had a data-driven approach from day one. Uh, John, I mentioned John's professional experience. John uh, came from Deloitte. So we're constantly looking at data and analyzing data. We're not pulling it out of the sky and, and coming up with nice sound bites on why things are working, why they aren't working. We're looking at data. And it is going to be extremely helpful, I believe, when we can drill down that data with one of the recommendations being let's get more specific, more more focused geographically on where we are putting our efforts. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of data, and I, I think we'll continue to get even more to tell us if we're headed in the right direction. And again, part of um, what's so wonderful about the support of the White House, we're getting technical assistance. I cannot stress to you enough what that means. We have almost 9,000 employees. We have a, a limited amount of resources and employees. But when you have the White House coming in and saying we are putting hands on deck and we are going to help you all with this, that goes a very long way. And we are very fortunate to be one of 15 cities who've been chosen to participate. And you've already exceeded your goal of hiring 1,000 young people through city programs. Um, you said you hired uh, 1,400 young people. Are you planning to track their progress in their uh, life? And uh, additionally, do you have a new benchmark for hiring young people in the city? Yeah, this is, you know, this is a commitment. So part of it, obviously, is putting them to work, getting money in their pockets. But the other part is staying engaged and also making sure that we're able uh, to meet them at their point of need. Um, I was really glad yesterday I just signed off Mayor's Youth Scholarship Fund. How many are we giving out this year? Over 60. Over 60 yes. kids? are getting at least $2,000 through the Mayor's Youth Scholarship Fund, so, or 2000 per semester, 4000 a year, up to $10,000 a year. So this is an ongoing uh, commitment on our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time for two more questions. He's new. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are immediate. Uh, some are uh, the expansion of cure violence is a phased in approach i believe with the last phase of it being uh, march of 2022 um, so all of the recommendations are immediate recommendations but some will take a little more time to implement as you know our commitment to the 250 officers goes through next fiscal year the expansion of the camera network i mentioned the light up expansion that goes through december of 2022 Yes, uh, well, we are clearly working with the mayor's offices and ADOT as it relates to what we are seeing with scooters. Uh, we recognize that they are a problem. Uh, as much as they are a convenience for some, they're, they're problematic for us. Uh, and so we are continuing to work with, with those entities to see how we can better police what's going on as it relates to utilizing scooters and crime. Uh, as, as your question is uh, where we are with the investigation, they continue to be ongoing. We continue to solicit the information from the community on anything that they have as it relates to crime. Uh, but right now, uh, th those all are still ongoing investigations. Thank you. We like the new guy. All right. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh yes, yeah. council people advisable, we want to take some photos real quick, so please don't go too far.